Oh my goodness, I'm back. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to myself. Wow, yeah, I was gonna take a short break, which turned into a few months, escalated into a lot more months, and now it's almost a year. I'm sorry to my like 10 regular viewers. You know, life. We, we all struggle sometimes. The most important thing, I'm back. I have a exciting video for you. And also, if you think my voice sounds a little bit different, I have been sick, but now I am back. But you know, the voice, it takes some time. So my nose will be a little bit and my chest is working hard. You know, it's just those things that stick with you a little bit longer. So my voice is a little bit more sexier than it usually is. With this video, I'm not only making a YouTube comeback, we're also starting a new Melody Festivalen season on this channel. Melody Festivalen is around the corner and I love that competition so much. If you follow me on Instagram and if you speak Swedish, I guess I made an announcement a few days ago. Every Friday, I am going to be talking in a Swedish radio station called P4 West on Fridays quarter past seven about the dance through the history of Melody Festival, how it has developed and what is specific to each and every single era. There will be six programs. I think it's only gonna be like a segment of five minutes, but each segment each week is a era by itself. So the first program that will be broadcast this Friday will have the 60s and then it will be 70s and 80s and 90s and so on quarter past seven in the morning so if you are a Swedish viewer I would be super happy if you were listening to that that would be like a introduction to what I will be talking in these videos that I'm now gonna present for you I figured for these radio broadcasts I do some research and I already done research like this is my thing I am a professional dancer and I am a true 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 Melody Festival lover and Eurovision lover like that's how crazy i am the eurovision logo tattooed on my arm in the coming six weeks i will be uploading a longer version with me just sitting here talking to you and telling you about all the research i have done for this radio program together with everything else throughout the years that i've gathered and give you more i hope you will enjoy it and love it so welcome to the first episode of Sarah's Mega Melomania Extravaganza. I don't have a name for this one yet, so we will, I will. Today I want to give you a treat to a time where black and white television, beautiful big hair, polished makeup, extravagant elegant clothing, soothing voices, and an era of glamour. We are talking about the 60s in Melody Festivalen. My overall introduction to this era when it comes to the program and the dancing. There were not so much dancing happening on stage, at least not in the entries. Remember, this is a whole other time period, almost a blast from the past for the 60s even. If you listen to the music, I would guess it was from the 40s, to be honest. Of course, that will affect what you do on stage and like the whole setup for the show was very different from today. The general thing I have to say when it comes to the dance history of the 60s Melody Festival is that it was very conservative, 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 yeah, you know what word I'm trying to say. When it came to the entries itself, there were not much dancing happen at all. Like I couldn't find any entry that had a dancer except for one. It might be the first dancer on stage in an entry in Maybe. I will talk a little bit more about that soon. Even the artists themselves, they were very simple. Pretty much one frame throughout the whole entry, they would at most just stand this. A little bit of a tapping and a little bit of a head shake. Very charming. It is super charming. I've chosen three different entries that I want to talk to you about to make a deep dive into the 60s and explain like why these represent this era. So short history of Malifis Valen. Eurovision started in 1956 but Sweden entered for the first time in 1958 which is still quite early. We just missed the first two years and during the 60s only once did we not participate in Eurovision and also did not 
have our own national selection and that was 1964 and the reason for that was in Sweden at the time there was this artist demonstration where they refused to participate in Melifisvalen thus far we did not participate in Eurovision other years we had our own national selection the program itself was still very new the format kept changing some years they had like the same song sung twice by different artists because they went to make it about the song and not the artist that would not happen today and I want to start with diving into the year of 1960 in 1960 there were no artists that danced on stage you can find the entire or pretty much the entire show I think on SVT play SVT is the national broadcaster in Sweden that produces the show you can find the whole show on their online streaming platform there are many years that you can't see and some of them are cut short and some you can only see like the winning entry so it's very difficult to go back and watch those shows so take everything I'm saying in this program with a pinch of salt I can't see all the entries so there might be statements I make that are incorrect due to there not being sufficient amount of live videotapes to be found and unfortunately a lot of these tapes have gone missing and been deleted thrown away and will never be able to be seen ever again it's sad but it is what it is anyway 1960 that's where i'm trying to get to there was this one interval act this interval act occurred after all of the entries had been performed the big orchestra were performing this orchestra version of over the rainbow and there was this one dancer named kari silva she was the show i tried so hard to google but i could not find out anything about her it only kept sending me back to another celebrity dancer that it's sort of famous right now <laughs> that have a very similar name so i don't know anything about her so if you know who this is maybe it's your grandmother i don't know please write to me i want to know who was she where had she studied how old was she when she did this how come she did this number i want to know those things because i take much pride in collecting this information and storing it for future regeneration <laughs> like that's my thing that's what i do my specific nerd vibe i have when it comes to melody for and eurovision so if you know anything about her please send me so it was a really cute little routine it was ballet she had ballet shoes on and she was dancing around on stage I kind of feel like this was sort of a last minute thing she is a good dancer but you know there's so many things I could play in this at this time I don't think they cared so much about making the floor or the stage area like danceable like if you are a dancer you know if you dance on a stage where the floor it's not made for dancing oh it's horrible I think it was very slippery and she was also extremely limited in space kudos to her because I think she did an amazing job and I enjoyed watching it but it's also very fun if you are like me a professionally trained dancer and you've gone through all of these ballet lessons she starts off with like sort of a plié adagio kind of thing very traditional ballet class stuff but in the same program as well there was a second interval act at the later stage like in the middle of the whole scoreboard moment I think it was actually that they legit like the juries had to call to the show and tell them like remember this is this is 60 1960 digitalization no they use a blackboard for the scores legit handwritten blackboard so in the middle of this whole scoreboard moment they decided to have a second interval act all i could find out about this interval act is it's a medley of eurovision songs imagine a eurovision medley in 1960 oh <laughs> the most hit song they had at the time was Volare. In this interval act there are two dancers. I don't know their names. They say that choreographer her name is Liz Sandberg. I don't know if she is the female dancer in this number but there are a man and woman dancing to this and later on also a third dancer comes in which to me looks like it is Kari Silva that's coming back. And that was all the dancing that happened in 1960 so and I think that really says a lot about this whole era in Olivesvalen because the dancing did not occur in the entries it happened in the interval act and as a separate segment of the show and I think also you have to think of the era in general at this time this is how they would do it it would be like here is this singer performing and now we're gonna watch this dancer dance and now we're gonna watch this especially with this community of music 
there are different music communities happening around the world where I think it's a whole different story. So don't confuse me saying that they didn't dance on stage with it didn't happen anywhere else, but it didn't happen in Malifa's wallet. Which leads me to the year of 1963. In 1963, there was a song performed called Twist Till Menuet. Translated would be Twisting to Menuet. I think Menuet is a music genre. This is one of those years where they had one song that was performed twice uh, by two different artists. The footage that has been saved is where there is this artist Lars Lundahl who is performing the song. It really looks like a 1950s gentleman. <laughs> He's just sitting on a stool like this <laughs> looking into the camera. It's like zoomed in and he's just sitting here and singing and being like charming. Yes this is me. You listen to my beautiful voice. I'm singing this song and it's beautiful. That's the whole thing. And then then there is this break in the music. It's a long break actually. And what does he do? The man stands up, walk to a woman that is sitting in this like bar setting they have built. He asks her to dance. They go onto the floor and start twisting. It's so cute. It's so cute. But the whole thing feels very unrehearsed. He doesn't hesitate when he is walking and asking her to dance. He's asking her up and they go to the floor and they start twisting. They are keeping a good distance between each other good healthy distance very composed <laughs> and in the middle of it he's like thank you for the dance and then he goes back and sits on his stool but I think he might have gone a little bit too fast there there is so much music still left before he is supposed to sing the next verse he looks so uncomfortable in that moment and this as well just as I said before this just proves this was not something they were used to maybe this was the first entry where they actually danced and this is also the entry that I might flag as be the first entry to have a dancer on stage within the entry because that girl in the background I have no idea who she is I don't know maybe she was some sort of host or something else or maybe one of the other artists because this is the thing because I have had this mission that I want to find out which entry had the first dancer in it for me personally that is important to know up until now I've claimed it to be a entry from 1983 I will talk about that in the 1980 show that I'm gonna do but this might be it even if this were to be one of the other artists or the host or whatever in my way of looking at it classify as being the first dancer on stage within an entry how I classify it is that there is a person involved within the entry whose sole purpose is to dance they are not backup singers it's not one of the musicians musicians this person's only mission within this entry is to dance. Therefore, I think this is the first entry where we see a dancer within a entry. Yay! <laughs> Historical moment. That's exciting. It would take another 20 years for it to happen again. Sad. All right, let's move on. <sighs> run our way to the last years of this century 1968 and a very iconic performance in Melifisvalen Det börjar verka kärlek banne mig Oh yes, try and say that foreigners <laughs> The title would translate to something like It's starting to feel like love I think every Swede still knows this song It's very charming And why I think this is a important entry in the Melifisvalen history in general is because this marks a new era in Melifisvan and music. This is the first like pop song that wins the contest because up until this point it's been very traditional, very old-fashioned. This song has vibes of like Beatles so and it's also like how he's dressing, how he's styled his hair and everything like that. In my opinion based on the information I've been able to gather from the 1960s the artist Klaus Jaren Hedenstam hit. I I always says his name wrong. Klaus Jaran Hederström. He is, in my opinion, the artist that is giving us most show. That was a new thing to happen with Melifsvalen at this time. The, the whole performance in general increased a lot with this entry. Does he have any dancers with him on stage? No. Does he dance more than the other artists have up until this point, in my opinion? Yes. Does he dance a lot? say like Cliff Richard, which competed the same year in Eurovision. No. Uh, this song is very similar to Cliff Richard's entry in Eurovision Song Contest named Congratulations. Also iconic song in this whole 
Eurasian thing. But let's say the big international idol for these entries are Beatles. And then you have Cliff Richard. And then you have Klaus Jaran Hedeström. So it's like he is step one and then Cliff Richard step two. Beatles is the ultimate goal. Hands happening, a lot of head shaking, a little bit of shimmy shimmy, step touch. But that's it. But it's also in his eyes. And that's why I want to ha have this entry be part of this video because in my opinion something happened here he showed the way to performing so let's try and wrap things up shall we the 1960s in Melodifes Wallen the 1960s in Melodifes Wallen was a very conservative era there were not much dancing happening there was a lot of poise beautiful faces beautiful dresses and hair and everything like that happening but dancing not as we are used to today but still i'm very happy for those things that actually happened during this era because if maybe wouldn't have started when it started it wouldn't have been what it is today it had all this time to grow there is no other time period like the 60s if you take each the 60s 70s 80s 90s so on all of those eras have their own flair and vibe to them but none can compare to 1960s the 60s i think is the most unique era of all eras you feel the connection to the 40s that might sound like a bad thing but i think not i think that is what makes the 60s so special and precious it really saddens me that we don't have any more live footages to show because it's also a beautiful piece of swedish television history i'm happy for what we still have got it's like a little jewel it's it's so precious is there anything else i want to say before i say goodbye no i think i managed to get pretty much everything that is important and once again if you know anything about these dancers that i mentioned before Kari silva liz sandberg and there was a male dancer in that interval like as well i would love to know even if you think like why would she want to know anything about my grandmother i want to honor what she has brought or or what he has brought to the contest because they are a part of the history if we name the artists why shouldn't we name the dancers i think it's important we gotta honor those because they were a part of creating this huge history and foundation that later on became the big international phenomenon malifa Island is <sighs> I love Medivis Fallen. I do. I hate it so much sometimes because of what it does to my mental health. But I love it also for what it does for my mental health. Alright guys, let's wrap things up. I need to get going with my life. And my voice is just slowly fading away. Let's take a quick sip of water. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you made it this far, if you're not subscribed, please do. I am a small business on the YouTube platform. So feel free to uh, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Don't miss out on anything I post. Yeah, the other, you know the thing. And if you love Relief as well, then please subscribe because there will be more coming up. Comment what is your opinion about the 1960s and Relief as well. And what are your favorite entries from this era? let's talk about it in the comment section and i will see you in a week and in that video i will be talking about the 1970s take care of yourselves and those you love bye